What's up Guardians? Sly here back at it once again with Destiny 2. So as we all start to level up, I hope most of you out there waited for the Nightfall and the other powerful gear rewards until after you were 260 or 265-ish. Because even though there are more ways to level up than we originally thought, it's still pretty hard to find gear after that 260 range compared to what it was below that. Now blues can drop higher, but they will only drop higher after you've reached you know, above 260, like the mid 270s, low 80s, something like that. And even then, while you're in the 80s, they only drop like 266, 267, which means they're probably there as infusion material for other items that you want to level up. In any case, the Nightfall is an absolute great way to boost that power level. Not only do you get the chest at the end of the strike, but secondary rewards for completing it that drop instantly, and the cherry on top is that Zavala gives you a powerful reward engram, which usually contains an exotic and something else all with very high attack and defense stats. It is definitely something that is worth the wait. Completing it, however, is another story, and that's what I'm here to help y'all do. So, let's get this bad boy underway. Now, in Destiny 2, there are brand new modifiers, and so far, they're pretty brutal. Really fun, though. Time Warp is the countdown Luke Smith mentioned a few weeks ago in an interview. They pretty much give you an unrealistic amount of time to beat the Nightfall, about 10 minutes. What the modifier does is add precious seconds back to the timer for every kill that you get. Red bars only give you a couple seconds per kill while majors rack up 7 seconds each. So being efficient is extremely important and killing your enemies with the quickness, crucial. However, you can only kill them so fast before you hit a time limit again. Like there's like a time cap meaning that the cap of how much you can add back to the, you know, the whole time. Short story, kill everything as fast as possible and keep your eye on that clock. Now on top of that, there's another modifier called Prism. It swaps out elements every few minutes. It reads this, your attacks matching the focused element deal increased damage. All other elemental damage is reduced. Kinetic and incoming damage is unaffected. The focused element rotates periodically. It tells you which element it is down at the bottom left of the screen, by the way, and you really, really have to pay attention here. So, for example, say that the featured element is solar for the next few minutes. Pull out your solar weapon for every shield and then go to town. Golden gun, dawn blade, hammers, all of these need to be used when their respective element is featured. If you do not have a solar weapon, then do not use your void or arc weapons. Even though there might be an arc shield in front of you, elements that are not featured for that brief moment receive pretty much like a big debuff and deal very small amounts of damage. Any super used outside of what its element is featured will be a complete waste, earning maybe one or two kills. So that's the biggest hurdle to get through. Communicate often and always call out what element it is. You don't get a lot of time here, so if you're waiting on something, use it the instant you see that element turn over. Next, let's talk about loadout. Now, a good kinetic scout rifle works really, really well here. But kinetic hand cannons, pulse rifles, auto rifles, they all work pretty well. Just make sure it has decent range. There are a lot of long shots in this strike. As far as energy weapons, I recommend everyone bring along Cold Heart and get it infused as high as possible. If you do not have Cold Heart, use Sunshot, Risk Runner, or any other good SMG. Something that does lots of damage in a short amount of time. Hand cannons can also work. Finally, power weapons. Snipers and rocket launchers. Make sure that they track because you're going to be firing at long distances. And missing when the clock is running out is a terrible feeling. There are quite a few Cabal tanks in this strike, so a high impact sniper rifle makes short work of them. But you do have to wait on your element to be featured. Otherwise, you're just wasting your bullets. So now that your loadout is ready, start it up and run. Stick together and try to team shoot as much as possible. Warlock rifts and barricades go a very long way here because remember, the enemy's weapons are pretty powerful at times. Now the first couple of areas here are easy. Just stick to cover and shoot as much as you can. Always call out if you have a rift. Even though damage is essential, two healing rifts for right now will be better than one damage and one healing because if you end up dead, that's a much bigger loss in DPS than not using a damage boost. So these areas right here, you just have to trample through it. Make sure you clear out the bridge for the person running the relic. Now the Cabal are fighting the Fallen, so once the bridge is clear, you can sneak up behind them and slam the relic down unnoticed. This place right here is an awesome place for supers. Enemies are bunched together and a striker titan can do some serious work here when Ark shows up. As soon as it turns solar, Dawnblader Gunslinger also do a pretty good job here. Now if you have a Hunter, Pole Dancer for the beginning and Golden Gun for the final boss. That really helps out. So after this place is cleared, head on through the base and pro tip, you can call out your sparrow for long distances while you're still in this strike. So if you need to move fast at the beginning, like fast through the tunnels, 
to simply sparrow it up. It shaves off a few seconds, but at the end of these tunnels begins your first big test. There are way too many enemies here, and the risk of death is extremely high, so kill the ones that are going to be in your way, the ones right in front of you and at the bottom of the bridge. After that, run towards the left hand side of this bridge and sneak your way past the cabal. Jump on these little posts here and then all the way at the top hide behind the boxes. Running past these enemies turned out to be the most effective way to manage your time here and this was after a few trial and errors. So stick to the left, run behind the boxes and if you did it quick enough you should be able to run through without taking much damage. Just be sure to clear the enemies you encounter at the beginning and right after you leave the tunnel. Don't run past those. Okay, so as you come into the next area, this is your first real challenge. Lots of enemies and a couple of tanks. Wait to enter and stick by the door. Now the tank will slowly come at you. Snipe it when your sniper rifle matches up to the featured element. You can down it really, really quickly in just a few well-placed shots. Next, go in and stick to the left. Have two people go behind the boxes where you see my fire team going and have the other person, which in this video was me, flip the switch on the right hand side of the room while the others are focused on killing and trying to earn back some precious time. Once the switches are flipped, group back up and focus on downing enemies as fast as possible. You have to kill them all in this area here unfortunately and do not run past them. If you do, it will come up from behind you when the next part starts and wipe your team. I promise you about that. <laughs> so after they're down, Head to the next switch and as a team flip the switch. Here is one of these slow areas I told you about. When you flip the switch, you're waiting for this tank to slowly lower itself and it just feels like an absolute eternity. Anyways, same thing as before here guys. Put a healing rift down behind the box, clear the ads in front of you with a nice place rocket, and then snipe the tank when your element is featured. Then go ahead and continue on. Just make sure you watch out for all the dogs when you open this next door. So this next area isn't really difficult, but it does take a lot of time out of your time limit. However, there are a lot of big enemies here. So the faster you kill everything, the more time you can add back to your clock if you think you're behind. Sniping here works pretty well, as do supers and of course cold heart. Snipe your way through this area. Just be careful of the turrets if you're trying to get up close for like an SMG or something like that. This is your last chance to add a few seconds back to the clock in any decent amount. However, take too long and it will cost you when it could have been your saving grace. So next up, here is the third slow moving elevator that pisses me off, although the boss is right above you. So as soon as you're moving, the instant you can see his head, start shooting. And as you rise up, this will be the final phase. As you do damage, he'll start to fly around all over the map. Make sure you stick together and use your rift. Keep constantly roaming because they're going to come out on both sides. This is where Coldheart earns that pre-order money. Use it to damage the boss when Ark is active. Sniping is also extremely effective here, but there really isn't enough heavy ammo around to use it as much as it would take. Now don't forget that the Nightfall challenge is to down one of the Thresher ships during the boss fight, so make sure you keep an eye out for that as well. Now if you've just completed the campaign and you've never actually played this strike yet, the object here is to grab those fusion charges and slam it down onto the machine that lowers the boss for more damage whenever he puts up a shield. So keep an eye out and head to them as soon as they're available. If you're not paying attention and they pop up and sit there, those are precious 30-40 seconds wasted when you could have been doing damage otherwise. They will spawn at the furthest wall from where you entered. Now it is quite of a jaunt, so like I said, make sure you go ahead and head that way and keep roaming. That way you can be close to whenever they start up. Now Cold Heart absolutely melts this guy if all three of you are using it. Switch up with one person using a solar sniper rifle, the other two using void snipers. So you can always be doing damage to him regardless of the featured element. Now personally I would use your sniper rifle first until you're completely out. Then switch to Cold Heart after that. Once you get him to about quarter of health and after he does his two little pillar deals, he'll come down and start to mingle. And when that happens, you're going to split up your team. Have one person behind him and the other two in front. This makes him constantly start turning back and forth and every time he turns, he exposes the critical weakness on his back. Putting Cold Heart to that weak spot just absolutely drains his health. After a few reloads, boom my friend, you have done it. Just be careful of the dogs that come out and make sure you watch those ads as well. Now if you do not have a decent sniper rifle, tracking rockets do a ton of damage as well. Plus, they help for ad control too, however you just don't get that many rockets in Destiny 2. Cold Heart, however, just made this 10 times easier. Since you're getting good damage and it runs off green ammo boxes, there will always be a source of ammo available, which is key here. But that about does it Guardians, the key is to make him keep turning around, putting someone behind him and in front of him during the start of the boss fight and especially at the end. He doesn't shoot because he can't figure out which one to shoot at, and this makes for easy damage. 
Anyways, just remember the tips and the guide, y'all, and you will get through here with plenty of time. But that's it for me, Guardians. As always, thank you all so much for watching. If you're new to the channel, thanks for checking out Sly Nation, and we would love to have you here with us. Feel free to hit me up on Twitter or Facebook, Sly Nation, Sly Nation Gaming. Subscribe for loads more Destiny 2 videos, spank that thumbs up only if you enjoyed yourself, and keep those eyes peeled for more D2 vids in the future. But until then, this is your dude Sly, and I'll catch you all next time.